Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. My name is Catherine, and today uh, we are going to talk about um, the ongoing conversation um, in Kenya about um, the entry rates uh, of police officers uh, in terms of academic qualification into the service. And uh, this question uh, about to all not uh, to uh, increase all to raise the entry rates of police officers to the service comes at a time when two senior people in the security sector seem to have a diverse opinion with regard to um, uh, whether to raise it or not. One of the um, officers or one of the senior um, person, uh, this police spokesperson says that um, they uh, fear or that they rather prefer to take police officers with grades below a C-class because those ones who are above uh, the C-class tend to go acquire education and then come back and request for promotions. And he says that these promotions, this quest for promotions then it jeopardizes uh, service delivery in the security sector. But on the other side, the CS Interior Honorable Matiani calls it that uh, educated or more educated police officers are an asset to the government because then a police officer who has a higher grade, maybe from Form 4, can be able to be taught on how to analyze blood samples, for example, and prepare detailed reports that can be used maybe by the DPP to prove or dis uh, disapprove murder in the, in the courts of law. So the question is, to raise or not to raise the entry grade of police officers, um, all individuals who enter into the police service. Uh, uh, when I premiered this video, a number of um, feedbacks uh, came in, and perhaps I will um, read through what um, various individuals had to, to say concerning whether or not we should um, add or we should increase the level of entry grades into the into the police force. So we have somebody says here um, that um, right. Somebody saying here that it is not that uh, very very um, important and. Is is called Adio from Zimbabwe, and he said, from my perspective and the Zimbabwean context, I don't think entry grades should change. What needs to change is the training. Those guys spend six months running around, being abusive or bullied by sadistic superiors, and do very very little studies of the raw constitution they are supposed to enf to enforce or uphold. You tend to find out that a police officer will just harass you instead of following what the constitution or the statute says. Introducing themselves or speaking with respect, telling you on your offense and reading your rights, then placing you under arrest and processing you for the court where you will be tried. In Zimbabwe, you are guilty until proven innocent and the, mo the moment a police officer sees or meets you, the harassment begins. So this is one of the responses concerning the police entry grades, not in Kenya, but from another country, of course, East Africa, Zimbabwe. And um, another one says um, from Ghana, uh, says that um, we have another friend from Ghana who says, um, What is the correlation between high grades and professionalism? Which is more attitudinal? 
It's about, it is about the entry grades, the quality of training they are offered, or the individual attitude or integrity, or the pull and push factors within the corrupt system. So what is important here? Is it a training? Is it the entry grades? That's the question. This is this another guy from Ghana who is asking, what is important in this case? Is it the entry grade or is it the training? Keep the comments coming, guys. Keep commenting. Send your feedback. We need to understand this thing today. What is important when we talk about a police officer? Actually, what makes a good police officer? Is it the level of grades they attained when entering the service? Is it the type of training they go through? Is it the work ethics? Is it how they call themselves? Is it the integrity? What, what, what actually makes a good police officer? What actually makes a good police officer? So from my perspective, I could say that uh, police officers... Um, what constitutes a police officer is not one single factor. And therefore, we cannot take maybe education to, to use it as um, the only um, measuring factor on police abilities and their commitment to work and their performance. We can also not take the training itself as the sole factor to say that this training is the one that's going to determine the kind of police officer. So for me, what makes a police officer is a multiplicity of factors that are intertwined and they interdepend on each other to produce a police officer who is more responsible, who is uh, informed about the law, about the human rights, about uh, report writing, how to treat even a criminal scene, and so forth. So for me, I could say that both the seniors, that is the C.S. Matiani and Charles uh, Owino, may be right. But the problem is they are only looking at what makes a police officer from one particular angle. And we fail to look at other intricate, all other essential things that actually makes a police officer. So when that one becomes the, the case, we are likely to have that pull. One will be pulling to the side and another one will pull to the side. And when you listen to the excuses that both of them will give, of, all of them actually will be um, like um, justified. So basically for me, I could say, we need to go through the process and the significance of police officers in a country. And it starts from the point that security is very, very important. And therefore, how we treat the men and women who we put into the service to offer this security to the country determines the safety and the security of um, another individual in that country. So another response is coming here. It's from Cheviot. Cheviot says, even without returning, the answer it's not. The answer is raising police rates is not necessary. There are many areas that need real reforms before we even talk of grades. Not everything is great, especially from such an education system. Enhanced training, improved work conditions and remunerations. IPOA do its work of oversight with the seriousness it deserves. Mwana Inchi to, to refuse to give Kitu Kidogo. Thank you so much, Cheliot. So this is also Cheliot replying from my WhatsApp. So as I was saying, we need to understand the, the purpose of police officers and the significance of security in a country. And we start by how do we treat and at which level do we place our police officers, the men and the women we have entrusted or we have given the mandate to offer security in the country. I could say that um, a police officer is made by three things. Number one, the attitude and their intrinsic motivation to join the service. It has to start from the personal level. And number two, it's about 
the basic academic qualification they have that will now determine number three, the training. So the motivation, the qualities, and the training process, all of them makes a police officer. So what happens is, if you get a police officer who is intrinsically motivated, actually, to offer services in the police officer, like he has chosen the, the service as a career out of love, out of passion, those people are likely more to perform better than a person who went outside there, looked for a job, never got a job, and realized that he can go and run and enter to the police force and enter the police force. So there we have two sets of individuals here. Somebody is intrinsically motivated and has the passion to offer services as a police officer. And we have somebody who is treating that service as the last resort to run from unemployment. Definitely, how those two people will treat this all will offer services in that service will be different. One will not take that job so much seriously because for him, it's all about money. And that one will do that work with um, their whole heart because it is their passion. So it begins there. And then when we come to the level of education, I believe that the current grade that we take the police officers into the system, it's not like that constant because I have interacted with men and women in the police force who have better grades uh, than even a sibling. And it does not totally imply that when they have the better grades, they make better police officers. And we have men and women who enter the force with, for example, a C plane or a C minus, and they are offering the best of these services. Now that then plings in the question of training. For us to talk about policy grades, we need to look at what kind of training the police officers go through. For a long time in Kenya, police officers have been uh, going through a nine month training. After nine months, this person comes out of Kiganjo or out of any police college and is given the gun and is mandated now to go or deployed to enforce the law and maintain law and order to the public. It's only recently with the current security sector reforms that the period of training has been increased to 15 months. That's one year, three months. So if I go back to the nine months, this is a person, for example, is called a D plane or a D plus in campus, in, primary, in, in secondary. And then, Within the period of um, nine months, you want to teach them uh, the basic law. You want to teach them uh, the military. You want to teach them how to make details reports. You want to teach them how to uh, the aspects of human rights. You want to teach them how to read with the public. Honestly, it is not practical. Because a police officer comes out of the college as a social worker, as a security personnel, as a traffic controller, as a mediator of conflict, as a conflict counselor, as a detailed reporter of crime. So all those things on one person. But when you look at the period that you take to train that person, that period, if an if is called an A in high school, with that nine month training, definitely that person cannot be able actually to offer the best or so that training is not enough. So it even becomes worse when you have somebody of a D or a C minor then being subjected to that same, same training of nine months and all those things we are supposed to produce like a police officer with all those virtues. So for me, the training part becomes the, the most important one. Yes, have those police officers come to the training, uh, have those C classes, have those C planes, bring them to the, to the police force. But expand the training time. And in this 
filling time have time frames that maybe the first one year we are going to teach these people about the law and the human rights and public relations. Then the next year we are going now to teach them basic, uh, total military. So in that way, when you are planning out this person uh, from Kigali or like during the pass out parade, you know that you have a full pick person who is not only prepared to offer the services to the common citizenry, but is well equipped to handle the challenges that comes along with the police service as a career. Um, when you look at countries like Norway, Norway is one of the countries in the world that has the best police, um, the, the best police service uh, evidence in, in their performance. For example, for the last 10 years, Norway has only registered one case of police violence, that the police have only killed one person for the last one decade. But when you look at how the police force or the police officers in Norway are trained, you will, you will find a connection between training and job performance. And you realize that in Norway, the police officers undergo a bachelor's degree course for three years. And the first and the third year, they spend it in college. The second year, they spend it in the ground training districts where they learn the military. And apart from that, after they have come out of the college, per year, these police officers go through a 40-hour training, especially with the guns, the guns and ammunition, to renew their certifications to hold guns and another weapon. Without this 40-hour annual training, the certification is, um, is withdrawn. But that's not the case with, for example, our country, Kenya, because we take our police officers for a training for one uh, for nine months, and then we bring them out. We are done with them. We give them the guns, and life just moves on. So for me, it's all about how do we make the police force a, a profession, a career. For me, when I see the, the, the police spokesperson says that, People with grades, when they come into the system, like they go advance their studies and they come back asking for promotion, which is your bad system, the service delivery. In a way, it kind of puts logic. It may have a point with regard to the entry grades, but the justification is quite odd. What's wrong with having educated police officers in the service? I believe that. Educated police officers are an asset to the country. And if they are coming back to request for promotion, what's wrong with that? Because other careers, other professions, teachers go teach and then they are promoted. Doctors go back to school and they are promoted. And sometimes even their salary is increased. So what is wrong with offering the same to the men and the women who have sacrificed their lives in, the, in this country to, to give us safety and to secure us when some of us are sleeping, watching over our businesses and so forth. So for me the comment the 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 comment by the by the police spokesperson only reflected a nation that is reluctant to improve the terms and conditions of work for the men and the women in uniform uh based on like if these people get promoted they will request for more money they would request for better work uh, conditions and so forth. So I think that statement, in as much as it may have a point in terms of grades, the justification was kind of um, based on fear rather than reality. And when I look at what the CS was saying, that we improve the grades and then uh, so that we can have people who can be people even to produce details reports. I agree with him, but the question, but the thing here is grades only, improvement of grades only without improving the nature of training and even the time of training is not going to produce that police officer who's going to give you a detailed report. So even if you get an A material from Alliance or from another school and you put them to the police force 
and you give them only a nine months training, even that one year, three months training. And then you want them to, to be all these virtues that we expect from a police officer. It's not going to be practical. So basically, improving the police service does not need us to look at one aspect and start throwing uh, stones towards that aspect. It's all about looking contextually at what makes a police officer what makes a good, actually, a good is the best term. What makes a good police officer? What makes a performing police officer? It's not about one angle. It is about a multiplicity of factors that need to be put into consideration and all the needs of these men and women be met. You may have a C plane or a C minor person joining the force, but the training that you will undergo through and the place he would be positioned, definitely that person will perform so well. It's the same thing. We have teachers. All these teachers never had the same grades in high school. We have those ones who, who go to, to colleges and study certificate. Others do diploma and others do degrees. Where these people are placed in terms of teaching is different. That's why we have P1 teachers and we have high school teachers and so forth. So, the same thing should apply to the police. If you have put somebody with a C plus and maybe you have seen that this person is performing, this person is quick to learn, this person is, you see, you whatever examinations that you give these people to get their understanding of what you're teaching them, place them where their services are needed. And if you have a C minor material, and you feel like this C minor material is not performing maybe in terms of paperwork, but this person is performing in terms of military. Place them in that military and they will perform so well. So it all depends. When you take in people from different age group, uh, grades into the service, do you treat them just like as one monolithic group or you classify them and give them the relevant um training that each category needs because i understand that within the police force there are so many things that are needed we need even nurses we need and that's why we have for example the cadets people from different fields coming together they learn yes security but they offer different services within the, the security sector so the same thing applies so let's not um make the men and women who enter the force maybe with three minuses and below feel like they don't deserve to be in the service when actually some of them are really performing. And let's not make the men and the women who are passionate about entering the military or the, the police service, but have scored P's, C's, sometimes A's, feel like they don't belong there. Don't make it look like if I, I get a P plus, I cannot be accepted into the police service. But at the same time, don't make it look that, that if, I have a C minus or a C plane, I'm a nobody in the security sector. Because by the end of the day, what makes a police officer is a combination of so many factors. So for me, it is a call that even as we talk about police sector reforms or security sector reforms, we really need to, add, to look at and ask ourselves, what are we reforming? For example, Reforming as a police uniform is not as significant as reforming the police training. We need to know exactly what do we need. Do we need the outlook or we really need the action? So we need to make the police force a profession. I have said this, this is the second time I'm saying this in my YouTube channel, that we need to make a police force a profession. And making a police force a profession is making a police force a career in which people enter out of passion and not out of running away from unemployment outside there. We need to make a police force look like a structured career process. Doctors go to universities, study for six years, or seven years studying maybe one element. Postgraduate students go back for their masters, spend the next two to five years studying just a concept. But we want to take our men and women in uniform 
through a nine months training or a one year and three months training and teach them everything at once. Then we expect them to be um, files and working computers to, to be downloading all that information in every situation that they encounter. But then of the day, all these people are human. So we only need maybe going forward, we look at how do we make it uh, a reality that we are able to, to, to preach the gap between the police performance, the police training, and the police entry grades. By the end of the day, this process has to be joined together because if it's not joined, then there must there, there, there is definitely going to be a problem somewhere. So if you know you need a police who has to write details reports, who has like who is specialized in writing reports, I like, don't know what, then you need to ask yourself. What does a basic, for example, report writer need in terms of education? And then how long to drain this person in terms of that report writing? And then how do you place them in the right place when it comes to deployment for them to deliver that service? So basically, that's what I can say. And therefore, the question on whether or not uh, the levels of police entry grades should be raised is not a question to answer with a yes or a no thing because treating education as the only factor to look at when it comes to police performance, then we are concealing a very, very important part of, um, of virtues that constitutes a good police officer. The police officers there needs um, better training, better improved uh, terms and, uh, and conditions of service. They need better salaries. They need that aspect to feel like they have the capacity to make decisions. They need support and they also need for cooperation from the public. So it's not about that the security sector in this country only relies or only falls as a responsibility of the men and women in uniform. It is a multiplicity of factors. It is a multiplicity of relations that needs to be amended. It is a multiplicity of factors that interdepend on each other to make our men and women in uniform to perform. Otherwise, if we continue looking at education only, we are going to get it wrong. What we need to do is accept men and women uh, from failures, uh, basic, uh, from failures um, grades. Uh, if we say, for example, let's take maybe from, so long as you have scored a sickling uh, and above, you are going to enter into the police service. And it doesn't matter whether I've scored an A or somebody has scored as a C plane. Then once we have entered into the college, then classify these people according to their abilities. And just like other careers classify, we have the health sector classifies its people. The education sector classifies it is people. The business sector classifies it is workers. Why is it hard for us to that to have that classification in the security system? But when I enter into the police college, I know I've come here. Yes, I'm a police officer, but in my capacity as a police officer, this is my position. This is what I work on, and this is what I'm supposed to deliver. So I believe that when we make the police officer a career, a, a profession that people will enter with the with the mind that I've entered here to perform, to produce results, and to secure our country. And this implies also that there are terms and conditions of us to be improved. Don't just tell police officers that you, you improve the grades or that you, you extend the training period, and then their salaries or where they're living and so forth. 
does not match the sacrifice or the effort they are putting in their career. So the input and the output and whatever they get from the service that they offer has to be like balanced. We have to appreciate them. And more importantly, we have to we have to call upon all the security sector stakeholders to sit down and ask themselves what exactly do we need to do instead of looking at it as as a factor like um let's do this and another one says let's do this and another one says let's do this no the security sector cannot run that way it's one of the intricate sectors and i believe that coordination that cooperation and that sharing of ideas among various stakeholders will lead them to the um constitution or the produ uh, the production or the the making of better men and women in uniform so i see uh bonnie wasike says police services are professional just like any other i totally agree with you that there should be a minimum entry behavior this should be at least a c plus wow so according to bonnie wasike the minimum entry behavior should be a c plus um yeah a c plane i mean sorry a c plane and i don't know why it says a c plane perhaps um it's because uh the minimum entry grades into colleges in Kenya is a C plane, actually. Yeah, it's actually a C plane. So if we say we want to have police officers with C planes or with C minuses, uh, it's okay. But so long as we place them in the right positions and stop uh, judging them from only the grades they score, let's also look at the, the, the process of the training we put them through because in Canvas, you don't get a police officer, uh, um, as a teacher who's called a C minor in the same course with a, a person studying teaching and who's called a P plus. These people are put in two different levels. One is put maybe in a diploma or certificate and the one is put in a degree. So that is it. So for me, it's all about take these men and women up set a minimum entry grade and this minimum entry grade should not be used as the sole factor for measuring police performance take a minimum entry grade for example say a c minor or a c plane take them to college categorize them see who belongs where what they can do what role they can play in the security sector and then there you are improve their terms and conditions of service pay them well Treat them like friends and human beings. Tell the public to cooperate when it comes to police, uh, to, 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 to aspects of arrests, avoiding criminals, stopping dictators to police officers, treat them like human beings who also make decisions on their own. And there you are, we will have very, very performing police officers in the country. Otherwise, let's make police pro, uh, the police service a profession and a career just like the other piece.